The results of the Deep Impact mission were published in the Journal of Science. Team members reported that they found only a smattering of water ice on the surface of Temple 1. In fact, to account for the water supposedly emit, emit, uh, emitted into the coma of Temple 1, the investigators needed 200 times more exposed water ice than they could find. But a much different vantage point on the water qu question is possible. When astronomers view the comas of comets spectroscopically, what they actually see is the hydroxyl radical, OH, which they assume to be a residue of water, H2O, broken down by ultraviolet light of the sun, photolysis. This assumption is not only unwarranted, it requires a speed of processing by solar radiation beyond anything that can be demonstrated, demonstrated experimentally. The mysteries find direct answers electrically in the transaction between a negatively charged comet nucleus and the Sun. In the electric model, negative oxygen ions are accelerated away from the comet in energetic jets, then combine preferentially with protons from the solar wind to form the observed OH radical and the neutral hydrogen gathered around the coma in vast concentric bubbles. These abundances simply confirm the energetic charge exchange between the nucleus and the Sun. The electric model thus re resolves two problems for the standard theory. One, cosmo cometologists have never verified that the assumed photolysis is, is feasible on the super efficient scale their explanation requires. And two, neutral hydrogen is far too plentiful in the coma to be the leftover of the hypothesized conversion of water into OH. But if the negatively charged nucleus provides the electrons in a charge exchange with the solar wind, the dilemma is resolved and the vast hydrogen envelope is a predictable effect. The single most dramatic prediction of electric comet model is this. On close inspection, a comet nucleus will reveal the well-defined effects of the electrical arcs that progressively etch away the surface and accelerate material into space. From the electrical vantage point, comets Vilt 2 and Temple 1 are low-voltage comets. But even in these cases, the etching process can be more than sufficient to make our case. On viewing the close-ups of Vilt 2, Several scientists initially declared that the craters were the result of impacts, but a small rock will not attract impactors, and it is inconceivable that such a small body would have been subjected to enough projectiles to cover it end-to-end -end with craters. And even if the inconceivable actually occurred, all surface relief would be quickly De degradated by sublimation of the ices that are assumed to be responsible for the cometary display. The nucleus of Vilt 2 was, in the words of team members, quote, covered with spires, pits, and craters, unquote, features that are more likely fo for a solid rock than a melting chunk of ice. Today, most astronomers distance themselves from the impact explanation of Vilt 2's surface, and rather than suggest an answer, the deep impact mission to Temple 1 only deepened the mystery, revealing the very craters, valleys, mesas, and ridges that the electric model, and only the electric model, has predicted. The Sun's radial electric field is weak but constant with distance in interplanetary space. In a constant radial electric field, the voltage decreases linearly with distance, a comet on an elongated orbit spends most of its time far from the sun and acquires a charge in balance with the voltage at that distance. But when a comet speeds inward for a quick spin around the sun, the voltage of the comet becomes increasingly out of balance with that nearer the sun, a situation leading to a high energy discharge. Most of the voltage difference between the comet and the solar plasma is taken up in a double layer of charge called the plasma sheath that surrounds the comet. When the electrical stress is great enough, the sheath glows and appears as the typical cometary coma entail. Diffuse electric discharges occur in the sheath and at the nucleus, radiating a variety of frequencies, including x-rays. The highest voltage differences occur at the comet nucleus and across the plasma sheath. So where the sheath is most compressed in the sunward direction, 
The electric field is strong enough to accelerate charged particles to X-ray energies. That may explain recent crescent-shaped X-ray images in relation to the comet nucleus and the Sun. Flickering and occasional flare-ups are also expected because plasma discharges behave in a non-linear manner. In 1976, Comet West never approached closer than 30 million kilometers to the Sun. So when a disruption occurred at the and the comet split into four fragments, subsequently to the display picture above, astronomers were shocked. In fact, according to Carl Sagan and Anne Duran, authors of the book Comet, 80% of comets that split do so when they are far from the Sun. Comet Wirt-Tannen fragmented in 1957, a little inside the orbit of Saturn, and something similar occurred to Comet uh, Biela Bamberg. In a paper published in the 1960s, Dr. Brian G. Mardson, an astronomer at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory in Cambridge, Massachusetts, drew attention to the anomaly of comet fragmentation. Discussing the sun-grazing comets, he noted that two instances, 1882-2 and 1965-8, look as if they had split apart near Aphelion, their furthest distance from the sun, well beyond the orbit of Neptune and far above the elliptic plane. Moreover, the relative velocity of their separation was far greater than could be due to sol solar heating. Unexpected fragmentation and anomalous velocities of separation are predictable behavior of an electric comet. According to Sagan and Durian, the problem is left unsolved, but they appear to have found a clue without recognizing its significance. Splitting and jetting may be connected. At the moment Comet West split, individual fragments brightened noticeably and propelled large quantities of dust into space and the first of some dozen bursts. The same could be said for the more recent comet linear breakup. Why would intense high-velocity jets and explosions of dust traveling at supersonic speeds precede the fragmentation of a comet nucleus? In the electric model of comets, the nucleus behaves like a capacitor. And as electrical engineers are well aware, if a discharge occurs within a capacitor, it can explode violently. And that is what causes comet nuclei to fragment, and it is why the event is commonly preceded by outbursts far more energetic than could be explained by sublimating ices. The energy is provided by the stored electrical energy within the nucleus. All that is required to trigger the comet fragmentation is an electrical breakdown within the comet, and that breakdown in the comet may happen with any sudden change in the solar plasma environment. The more sudden the change in a comet's electrical environment, the more likely that flaring and fragmentation will occur. NASA scientists were astonished to observe a remarkable 300,000 kilometer mile wide flare-up of comet Halley between the orbits of Saturn and Uranus. Under the assumptions of the snowball theory, the nucleus should be frozen and inert at that distance. But in the electric model, the event was no accident, and it followed some of the largest solar flares ever recorded. The electric model also explains why we should expect long-period comets to put on a brighter display than short-period comets. The long-period comets spend a longer time in a region of lower plasma potential than the short-period comets. Consequently, their voltage difference, uh, voltage difference on their approach to the sun will be higher, leading to a brighter and more energetic discharge. In the electric comet model, the electrified plasma environment of the Sun allows for two-way transactions that are inconceivably, if interplanetary, inconceivable if interplanetary space is truly a neutral plasma medium rather than a quasi-neutral medium. In 2003, as Comet NEAT raced through the extended solar atmosphere, a large coronal mass ejection, CME, exploded from the Sun and appeared to strike the comet, causing a kink to propagate down the comet's tail. Of course, for solar physicists, the timing of the mass ejection could have no connection to the approach of the comet. SOHO has, in fact, recorded several instances of comets plunging into the solar corona in coincidental association with CMEs. But the scientific mainstream allows for no electric force external to the sun to have any influence on the sun's atmospheric behavior. But how could an electric sun respond to the approach of a relatively small but strongly charged object. 